Welcome everybody to this third edition of CIS Roundtable. We're delighted to have with us today five members of our CIS community who are going to be talking to us about what it's like to be an artist in the 21st century. My name is Jay Lau and uh, I compose music and I'm in year 9. My name is Aviva Wong and I'm a year 11 student. Hi, I'm Wilson Lai. I am a class of 2015 alum and a current year 2 teaching assistant and also a freelance videographer. And I'm Alice Rosen. Uh, my, I have a daughter, Maya, who's in year 9, and I am a violist in the Hong Kong Philharmonic. Hi, I'm Alison Wong. I am the secondary head of art and a film teacher here at CIS. How did you first discover that you had a, an affinity for the arts? I've been passionate about the performing arts ever since I was young in primary school, um, acting in every production and musical that was available, and I signed up for drama classes. And I remember my first major experience with the performing arts was auditioning for the stage production of Treasure Island um, with Faust International Youth Theatre. Ever since then, I've been acting in short films and most notably a uh, you know, a comedy drama film called uh, Go Back to China. It's this creative outlet which allows me to share other people's stories and emotions, to connect and relate with each other and with an audience, and most importantly, I, I, I love it. As a kid, I approached the arts in mostly like a sort of like a hobbyist kind of way where my parents would sign me up for classes and I would take drawing classes and that sort of stuff, but it didn't really start until secondary where I was in Miss Wong's class, film class, and um, started to realize that I did have a passion for filmmaking and that it was something that I could really like pursue in a, in a way outside of school mm -hmm. and, and sort of grow that into a career. A few years ago, uh, I started listening to a lot of music uh, to the point where it basically became part of my life. And uh, I was so passionate and I listened to so much music that I realized that each song kind of uh, had its own small kind of problems with it and small issues that I felt like, you know, almost could be improved and kind of reiterated. So then uh, I took that passion and I kind of continued it on by trying to make my own music. Young people are born with a kind of innate creativity and then it's very difficult to sustain that over the course of, of a lifetime. I think that the root of it is kind of like what Wilson described, the, just the passion really is almost like overwhelming. There's really nothing else you can be doing because that's all you want to do. Mm. And, uh, and, and the constant drive to do it better, I think, is really important. But there has to be always a desire, um, I think, to improve and to get closer and closer to sort of the ideal, which you can, we know we can never reach the perfect, you know, there's no perfect artistic expression, right? So. Um, I think that's really motivating. I don't think art is artinacious. I think you know that that is a, mm. an overriding, mm. um, you mm. know, personality trait of successful artists. Certainly, that they have that drive, they have the discipline, um, because you are honing your craft over and over and over again. And it's that discipline to to continue that I think the arts really brings to, um, you know, our sensibilities. Acting is a highly competitive uh, career path to take. Um, it's just about impossible to reach that A-list celebrity level or even maintain a stable career in acting from what I'm, what, from what I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think that you have to be famous to be an artist, right? Please. As long yeah. as you hold on to that creativity and drive and passion and individuality so reminiscent of art, then you can technically remain an artist throughout your life. When you first start, you normally start with an experience or a thought, and that slowly accumulates and builds up. And I think that passion of constantly finding new experiences and turning that into inspiration, and that drive really helps you uh, kind of wish that you could constantly express yourself in all of these different ways. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that's mainly uh, why uh, I love the art so much. Like I think in order to create any sort of piece of art, there needs to be uh, a strong enough desire from within to tell that part of you 
whether that's like an emotion or an experience, I think it needs to be powerful enough in order to get you to make something to share with others. And whatever reason that may be, if you want to sway someone's opinion or if you want to just invoke that same feeling for someone else, like I think the, the urge needs to be strong enough from within. Is it uh, enough for the art simply to put us in touch with the beautiful? I always think that's the, the, the sort of smallest part of the art, really. I feel like that's the tip of the iceberg. Um, you know, the beauty itself, because the, uh, the arts are really about, you know, the ideas and the, um, the process and the thought and the, um, yeah, the sort of, you know, generation, the innovation of the unknown. The arts is part of the human adventure. Like, mm -hmm. it's human. When you go to a culture, you look at their arts, their dress, their music, their paintings, their ceramics. Um, and if we ever stop appreciating the beauty in art or just stop caring about it, then I think that is the day we stop becoming human mm -hmm. because technology can become so advanced, right? But at the end of the day, it can't replicate the intangibility mm -hmm. and abstractness and, mm -hmm. and individuality and humanity of art. I think it's something abstract. It can't be replicated by code and ones and zeros mm -hmm. in technology. For me, for instance, at the contest that we put on, the, the beauty of it or the, um, the emotional impact of the experience mm -hmm. is really the, the, the paramount part of it in that moment for everybody, for us on stage and for the audience. And it's what makes it so exciting. And I, but I think it's not just that in that moment, but it's sort of, I, I hope for the audience and I know for, for hopefully us on stage as well, uh, sort of enables you to, to, to view the world through a way in a way where you're thinking about these things more and you're not just thinking about the nuts and the bolts you know but you're thinking about the feelings and the noticing other things in the world that are beautiful and um and hopefully it, it gives rise to to valuing those qualities in life more than certain other qualities you know that maybe are not as fulfilling i think we would all say that the 21st century has ahead of us some big challenges it's a little bit more abstract than that in that it's not you know the, the here is a painting and therefore it will make xyz effect on climate change i think it's more the artistic sensibility so when we're in schools and we're learning about the arts when we're learning you know to play an instrument or we're learning you know to to draw something that didn't exist before make a film about people who didn't exist before we are giving students the agency to say you can create something out of nothing and that is a powerful way of you know, teaching um, the next generation to find solutions for problems that don't you know, yet have solutions. I think that um, I agree with, with those statements, but I also think that, that a pre being able to appreciate the arts, either by, by making art yourself, performing art, or just being able to enjoy it, um, puts us in touch with this fe certain feelings, and um, that ties us to our common humanity. And I think anytime people are more in touch with our common humanity, we're more likely or inspired to tackle problems that our common humanity are facing. So it's a little more abstract, but I do actually think that people with the mindset to be in touch with those sort of feelings or appreciating mm -hmm. those, um, that beauty or those, those deeper emotions have a, tend to have a more of a mindset that we are all one system here. Most people around this table are relatively successful artists in their own separate fields, right? But we, I, I would assume that we all came from backgrounds that did allow us the, the privilege mm -hmm. to be able to pursue those arts. And um, I'm thinking about other people who don't really have the, I don't know, socioeconomic standing when they yes. were born right. to even have the opportunity to pursue this. You know, a lot of the, 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 less privileged communities don't have access to an arts education and perhaps that is you know that could be something that is a game changer we don't know mm -hmm. um, but I think you know those of us who do have that privilege um, have the responsibility to share that. Mm -hmm. In your opinion why is it so important for CIS to teach the arts? CIS is already doing a great job um, but just continuing to promote these student-involved 
um, arts events and clubs, um, like the SAE, Student Arts Executive, or like just organizing an annual production or having more student artworks be displayed around school. I think these examples can not only share their talents with the wider school mm -hmm. community, but it can also serve as a motivation and inspiration for them to continue being involved with mm -hmm. the arts, no matter if they choose to pursue it or not as a main career path. I think a lot of students are very set on like what they have to do and sort of already thinking so many years mm -hmm. ahead of sort of planning out their life and it gets very stressful. I was there, I was, yes. <laughs> I was a CIS student, yes. but I think like sort of carving out that space where they're sort of free to express themselves however they want to um, without having to sort of burden their mind with, a, with other s stuff um, makes it, I think, like an experience of, of like joy, which I think is a thing that a lot of the young people like just still need to have in their lives as a constant. I'm curious if there are artists in any aspect of the arts that give you a special inspiration. In Japan right now, and his name, uh, he's a guitarist, and his name is Ichika Nito. Uh, and he's like extremely talented, uh, and he also composes uh, this sort of charm music. And his style is extremely, uh, extremely unique, and um, almost, you could say, like beautiful in a way where uh, everything seems kind of uh, bittersweet, right? And uh, basically the question that I'll probably ask him is just how do you make these sort of chords? Vincent van Gogh, um, he had such a traumatic life basically and uh, he cut off his ear, he, he died at a very young age, but he was so pos posthumously successful. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows his name now. So the one question I would ask him is, would you do it again? There's this documentary filmmaker named Frederick Wiseman from the U.S. who makes, who has been making docs for 50 years. He's like 90 now. Um, but what he does is he, like, he reaches out to an institution or to a place and he basically like lives there for like a couple weeks and just shoots every day and then makes these really like mammoth documentaries about institutions and the people who work in these institutions and run these institutions and how they they work. I think I would ask a lot about his process and how he he approaches projects and he approaches people. I would probably say yo Ma, um, the very famous cellist, obviously. He's, he's just done some so interesting things with the evolution of his career. Mm. Um, he could still just be playing the same three concertos anywhere in the world, you know, 52 weeks a year. But he, he doesn't do that. He developed the Silk Road project and he's, he's branched out into all these different things and I think really kept his, his musical life um, very much alive. And so since he's been doing that such a long time, I think it would be fascinating to talk to him about his process as well. And, um, you know, does he miss doing the standard stuff? How does he come up with new ideas after all these decades of, of playing the cello? A director called um, Agnès Varda, um, who many of you may know from the French New Wave. Um, she is a phenomenal, uh, ph phenomenally generous filmmaker. But what stands out with um, Agnès Varda's work is that she she's a woman working in a very male-dominated world. Um, and she makes films as though they were her life. Um, you know, she has her family in the film. She talks about issues that um, are relevant to, you know, a very small cross-section of people. And I would ask her, you know, what is a good life for you? Like, how do you define a good life? Because I think, you know, it's so, I see it in her movies and I would just love for her to say, you know, just do what you love and um, let it be. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming together and sharing of your own individual experiences and, and nurturing uh, the artist inside of us and reminding us, in some cases, awakening in us for others, the belief that the arts really can make a difference.